We're now going to take a look at how you can build more complicated websites using remote themes. There are two basic strategies that we can use. The first strategy that we're going to look at is when we only host the content of the website on our GitHub repository and we depend on the remote repository for all of the styling. The other option is to clone the entire repository and replace the content that's in the existing template with our own content. In the first case, the challenge is creating all the files that you need on the website locally. The challenge in the second case is getting rid of or changing all the many files that you're going to copy over when you fork the website. So there's challenges either way. I'll demonstrate how you can do it either way and then you can decide for yourself which you think is easier. There are a few general things we have to do where we use the method where our content only is stored locally. One thing is that the instructions that you find on the Remote Themes website usually have information we can ignore about configuring Jekyll locally. Since we're using Jekyll on GitHub, we don't have to worry about that. We will have to edit config.yaml and set the remote theme and customize any other things that we want in the configuration. Then what we need to do is figure out what folders are in the remote theme that we need to copy to our own theme in order to override the remote theme. So this may be some YAML files that hold settings. It could be markdown pages corresponding to web pages on the site. We may also need to add some of our own images or edit YAML or HTML templates in order to make them work with our own content. You can do more complicated things like changing the color themes using skins or modify the CSS, but that's really beyond the scope of what we're going to do. So let's take a look at how we can edit a remote theme. For our example, we're going to use this academic theme that I found on this website right here. It is hosted on GitHub. If I look at the configuration information, it shows me what the website's going to look like. Here's the installation part we can ignore. So the first thing that we need to do is to add the theme as a remote theme. The way we will do that is copy the repository and the website name, and then go into our config.yaml file and change this from theme to remote theme. I went ahead and just pushed that single change, changing to the remote theme, to GitHub. Now let's open up a new tab and go there and see what it looks like. Well, we can see some aspects of my own website. Here's the cat part. But there are also parts of the other website that I don't want. For example, I would like to have my own picture over here. Um, also, the publications and updates are missing, so I need to add some additional parts that are missing. Let's start by trying to fix the picture that's on the home page. If I right click on this and say to open the image in a new tab, I see that the path to the image is in the assets slash image directory and in a file called home.jpg. If I want to replicate this myself, I need to put my own image in there and call it the same thing. So let's create a folder inside the docs folder and call it assets. And inside that folder, we want to create a new folder called img. And inside that folder, let's put the image that we want. So I will copy this and paste it in here and change the name to home.jpg. So I've basically created the same structure that's on the remote site, but I've replaced it with my own content locally. Let's push this up to GitHub and see if it works. After some time, in order for Jekyll to rebuild the page, let's press reload. There, now it's replaced it with my own image. If I click on the example website here, 
One of the things that I can notice is that there are some links to other pages up here, and I'd like to know how to turn those on. Usually menus and that sort of things are controlled by a YAML file somewhere, and this data folder looks like a good place to check for that. Ah, here's one called settings.yaml. Let's take a look at that. All right, here I see where the menu items are set up. So if I want to modify this to work for myself, I just need to create an underscore data folder and download this settings.yaml file into it. So I'm going to right click on the raw file and say save link as. And I will go to docs folder and create a new folder called underscore data. And let's put the settings.yaml file in there. Now if I go ahead and push this up to the website and wait a little bit, now I see that these various links have shown up. Of course, I haven't actually created the pages that I need. I will need to do that by going in and creating files in the landing page directory called people, publications, or so on. I can also just go into the settings.yaml file and get rid of any things that I don't want. For example, if I don't want a courses page, I can just go in and delete this line. If I want to change contact into contact me, I can just change that, as well as any of the other things that I have down here. Let's go ahead and try that, save that, and then let's create a contact page. I'll go ahead and add some stuff here. And I will go ahead and save that as contact.md. Let's go ahead and push the changes up. I'll try cl clicking on the contact link of my page. So far, nothing happening, but we may need to wait a little bit. There's my content that I added. So you get the point. You need to basically figure out what are the parts of the website that you want to have working and what files you need to copy over from the template website in order to add the various things that you want.